We have filed a lawsuit, a federal lawsuit. We'll put it up on the screen. Uh, American Center for Law and Justice versus the United States Department of State. This case involves money. It's a very troubling development. Here's what happened. The State Department offered um, up to $987,000 to, quote, strengthen accountability in uh, and human rights in Israel, West Bank, and Gaza. And according to the Washington Free Beacon, the administration is offering this money to investigate, quote, alleged human rights abuses in Israel, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip. Now, this is from... This money was authorized a year ago. We filed suit today. The reason we filed suit today is because now even more money is being poured into that region and we're having to deal with this. So look at the situation as it exists now. The ACLJ is in federal court to find out what in the world was going on. Did anybody actually take this money? Why would we do this in the first place? And why did we lump Gaza in uh, Israel in with Gaza and the Palestinian Authority on human rights abuse. Yeah, and they were only looking to spend this million dollars for a couple of groups. And there's no report, no notice of a reward to any groups. That was only supposed to take five or six months. So within this year, that should have happened. The question we have is, was is there something brewing already within the Palestinian territories inside even the West Bank or the Gaza Strip with Hamas and the reason why money didn't go out or did they fail to report? That money did go out because they didn't want us to know who that you know five hundred thousand dollars went to and the other five hundred thousand dollars went to and what group they may have chosen to uh, investigate Israel. I have a feeling uh, that would be interesting to see as well. But at a time, Dad, again, like you're talking about spending, putting in hundreds of millions of dollars into aid, even billions of dollars into the Gaza Strip, when we know Hamas right now is siphoning all of the gas. They have images of it and videos of it. The gas trucks come in. Through um, the crossing in Egypt, Hamas siphons the gas. It goes right, to, right into the rockets. Well, this is precisely why we're, we're filing the lawsuit today, because there's, they're, they're talking about more dollars coming in. Breaking now, and it's actually kind of, this remind me too, as I'm seeing it on, on television too, is how these Hamas rockets have changed over the years and have, have become um, less and less crude rockets and more and more advanced rockets. And, and just now, like a kindergarten was hit in Israel yep. uh, with rockets. Now the kids, uh, I'm sure it was it's evening there. Um, and again, but the, the way that they target is they're able, they know that's a kindergarten. They know that they're hitting, they're aiming rockets towards a town or a village. They, they know they're not aiming at a military institution. They never do that. And that's been Hamas's go-to the yeah. entire conflict. And by the way, the difference between Israel and Hamas on that is Hamas will use a kindergarten to launch attacks out of. Israel never does that. Yeah, and Hamas will also target a kindergarten in Israel. Right. I mean, so, but the kids there, you know, they're used to having to run, run underground. You see how it blows out windows. It, it does cause serious damage. And uh, and again, I think what it underscores is, what's interesting is that while you keep seeing these images of Gaza just being, you know, flattened by uh, this air campaign by Israel, Hamas is so underground with, with their weapons and because they keep stealing, any, this is why the aid is such a joke. Every time aid comes into to Gaza right now, it's being taken by Hamas. It's not getting to normal people. It's not getting, getting to people in their cars. It's going to rockets. Have you noticed, if they really had a gas shortage in, in, the, in, the, in the Gaza Strip, the rockets wouldn't keep being fired. Because it takes gas right. and oil to fire those rockets. So what do they do? They siphon it off. They, fire, they continue to fire rockets. Hamas has no shortage of any supplies at this moment. That's correct. So let's take a look at th this. Is a couple of things we need to put in perspective. So it, last year we filed two FOIA requests to expose uh, the Biden administration's actions, which I thought were a betrayal of Israel uh, and, and an attempt to appease Iran. Now we're in federal court on one of them. The one we're in federal court on deals with money on a reward for reporting abuses, really targeting Israel. And they throw Hamas, they lump Hamas, Gaza, uh, and the Palestinian Authority in one. So that case got filed literally this morning before we went on air. We are in federal court in the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. We find all kinds of information. Last time we did this, we found out that Mahmoud Abbas's son, Abu Masan, the head of the Palestinian Authority, got a million dollars from the State Department. I mean, think about that for, for some program. Think about that for a moment. 
The son of the president of the Palestinian Authority, who's as corrupt as can be, gets a million dollars of our taxpayer money. Secretary Blinken uh, was in Israel today with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Herzog. And we saw yesterday a uh, Hamas leader go on a Lebanese uh, TV channel justifying October 7th, saying that, uh, by the way, uh, there will be October 7th every day. And they will continue to happen over and over and over again. Are you concerned at all yet about the administration pushing for Israel to back off on, on the mission to eradicate Hamas? I mean, there's certainly, you hear more and more calls for ceasefires from other countries. That word keeps coming up. It's even come up from Hezbollah's uh, leader. Uh, but uh, but so far, uh, the U.S. has called for cessations so they could get out hostages, but they haven't called for that ceasefire, though it seems like world pressure on them is going to be pretty high. Jordan, I think that's very true. I listened to Secretary Blinken this morning. He clearly is very moved by the pictures that he has seen. Uh, that, that much is clear. But his statement was kind of all over the lot. Uh, they express support for Israel and its need to wipe Hamas off the face of the earth, but at the same time are putting enormous restrictions on them, or at least seeking to put enormous restrictions on them. And I think you're right. Uh, more to follow there. Nearly every other nation has called for a ceasefire, you have Senator Durbin calling for a ceasefire in exchange for getting the hostages home, right? That just that's just that's the kind of appeasement that begets precisely what we saw on October seventh. Um, I hope that Prime Minister Netanyahu, Netanyahu will feel the freedom to do the necessary, in spite of pressure coming from the United States. He already has a one front war fighting Hamas. He doesn't need a second front being battled out in Washington D.C and in the salons of Europe. He needs the unmitigated support of the world to do what the world needs, which is to have Hamas eliminated. It's not just a benefit to the people of Israel. It's a pe it's a benefit for the people of Gaza. It's a benefit for the people of the region. And it's certainly good for the United States as well. There is work going on right now inside the United States to get funding and support uh, to Israel. You've got two versions of a bill that's going through the House of Representatives, right. what's well, gone through the House, and one going through the United States Senate. The bill that went through the House uh, did get uh, 12 Democrats to support it, so it wasn't completely partisan. It could have been, and there were some Republicans who I think did not support it. And uh, there was, they there's because there were funding cuts to uh, the IRS uh, in that, and uh, the Democrats obviously in the Senate don't want that. Now, uh, some uh, House Democrats just said, you know, Israel needs the funding more than the IRS right now. We'll figure that out later. Let's get Israel the funding. Certainly, the Democrat-led Senate, though, is not going to just send that to the to, to Biden. So something's going to come back different from the Senate. I'm sure Schumer will get something approved. The question is, is it going to be 14 million to Israel, 15 million to Ukraine, 20 million to IRS? Who knows? And then that goes back to the House. We don't know how that will all play out. And what's important is that this quick this quickly comes to a head, and it gets signed well, by the president. Look, this resources get to Israel.